happened in the last few weeks actually the last episode i recorded a couple of weeks ago where i outed the company i used to work for who kind of you know did me wrong um had them haven't paid us our salaries have now uh, decided to get in touch via email and write a fairly lengthy email which kind of i, I didn't address any of the points that i kind of brought up in my video uh, and they and that's all um narcissistic um self-centered companies are they only saw the wrongs I was doing. If supposedly I was in the wrong, supposedly I was jeopardizing other people's case and position. Supposedly I was um, at fault for many things in this company's eyes. So um, they decided to play the victim in the email, write me a long soliloquy about why maybe I should stop doing the things that I'm doing, which is interesting, right? Because, you know, some of these companies um, that, you know, treat their companies, treat their employees like shit, they only do so because they can hide behind this... Um, uh weird kind of agree this weird cloak right of professionalism where if you're the employee you don't necessarily want to you know ruffle feathers you don't want to look unprofessional you don't want to do anything out of turn or out of character right don't want to speak out the side of your mouth per se and they use that to their advantage because for the most part they can do you wrong right they can not pay you they can probably not give you that promotion they promise they're going to give you or promise they're going to give you the opportunity to get the promotion they can do many things to kind of, you know, make you feel as if you're not um, um, valued or, or you're not respected in the workplace. But the moment you try to shame them in public is the moment they come at you with all guns blazing. And why they do that? Because by and large, people don't do it because they don't, they don't want to suffer the wrath of a company. Well, I like to say this publicly. I'm not scared of anyone, right? I'm not scared of any of these motherfuckers, right? I think for the most part, I respect those who give respect. You give me respect, you show me that you're a good person, you show me you're doing good work, you treat others with respect as well. That's the kind of person I am. I'm not even that bothered about whether or not you show me respect. Show show me that you treat others with people with respect, especially the ones who work underneath you. And, or even or even better yet, your customers. Let me see how you treat your customers. Let me go on Glassdoor and read the reviews, even though Glassdoor can be a bit crazy. Let me go on your Facebook page and read the comments left by people that review your app or your service. Let me see what the customers think about you. Let me Google your name on Twitter. Let me Google your name on Instagram. Let me see what people say or search your name on Instagram, whatever it may be. Let me see what people say about you. And then we can start this talking about respect. But, you know, to try and bully an, an employee. I don't even work for you anymore, right? So imagine that. We, don't even, we technically don't work for you anymore and you're trying to bully an employee is is um is quite laughable to be honest it's really really laughable but um again i will not be bullied that's not a vocabulary that even exists in my in my um in my uh arsenal of words um that's not something i acknowledge or anything so that malarkey but in an effort to kind of keep peace in the middle east and to ensure everyone gets a fair crack at in receiving the uh, the money that they're owed i will cease from doing any sort of um post anymore regarding that situation and kind of keep that to myself uh but the moment i feel like they're taking the piss the moment i feel like um you know you know um the moment i feel like they are not acknowledging what's going on i will again raise my hand and say my piece that is especially what i'm going to do because like, again these places like i mentioned a few times i think um after listening to uh, Jason Fried, he wrote a book called uh, It Doesn't Have to Be Crazy at Work, which I've recommended a few times to a few people. Um, you can get an audio book. It's a fairly quick audio book to read. It's even better reading it on your tablet. It's, a fairly, it's, very, it's quite, it's not like, a, it's kind of written like a pamphlet. So a really nice little short little bits, little, little um, segments of advice, nice cool illustrations. You can get through it in a day if you want to. It's a really cool book. I recommend you check it out. But Jason Fried is one of the co-founders of Basecamp, and he basically writes his book as like an um, it's like an antidote to the chaos you might see in startups, right, or in companies that are trying to implement a startup culture. So all that stuff about flat hierarchy, all that stuff about uh, massages at work, uh, foosball tables, company outings, all that stuff designed to keep you at work, just to keep you kind of on the fucking treadmill. He kind of works against it and kind of wants to have a workplace that's peaceful, a workplace where people get to do their work uninterrupted. So he doesn't he doesn't have they don't have Slack in their office. Imagine no Slack, no messaging service. Which is fucking my heaven um you know no slack if you don't talk to somebody you got to talk to them in person if you want to request a meeting you have to ask them first you have time on their schedule you can't you don't just have access to their calendar you know sometimes when you work in a workplace and you might want to have a meeting with your manager they'll be like oh just uh, check my calendar and you can just insert yourself in their in their calendar sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad because of course the manager then doesn't get to do any work because he or she's always interrupted by things right because usually you know the more senior you are in these, in these companies the more you're having to kind of like put out fires for the most part you're not actually doing any sort of work you're not actually leading the team you're not setting a mandate you're not kind of driving them forward um so he fights against all that and he's got a really good book that kind of um just talks about you know the workplace drama and what's kind of happening on startups and i think um 
by and large, I think that book, what it again reminded me of is my, you know, my impression or my idea is that for most people, right, working, regardless if it's working on startup or corporation, most people would rather not do it, right? Most people would rather not do that work, right? But part of the reason why you want to work is because, especially as an adult, especially in work, living in a big metropolitan city like uh, like London, it's quite rare you get to meet new people, right? New interesting people that you might develop friendships with. And work in kind of a weird way has kind of supplemented that. It's kind of acted like as um, a replacement for colleges and universities, right? A replacement for maybe your low ranking in your social group, right? You can then start a job in a new place and all of a sudden you've got a new social group people to hang out with. Man, now... It might be service level. It might be the kind of workplace where as soon as you leave, no one's called you anymore, right? Or all those kind of things. But at least for the time you're there, you have friends. And I think that's worth it. That's worth it to have a job alone, right? But the moment people start, the moment the company themselves starts to take themselves, to take themselves too seriously, the moment they want you to justify your existence, the moment they want you to act like an entrepreneur for a company you work for is the moment that I kind of, I, I tap out. I tap out. I tap out because for the most part we all want these jobs to keep a roof over our head keep us fed right and keep us and kind of you know do do the stuff we want to do outside of work we don't go to these jobs to find fulfillment we don't find go to jobs to find um uh, to find a reason to exist right they don't they're not going to fill a hole in our heart we go there in order to kind of exchange our time for money and they do the same thing for us so the moment they kind of overstep their mark and try and think they're bigger than what they are is the moment most employees kind of like clock out and especially, added to the top of that, especially when you work for a company and the basic things that they need to do for you, right? Provide you with a safe area for you to work and also pay you on time. If they don't pay you on time, then all bets are off. There is no, um, there is no reason. There is no, um, you know, there is no, um, there is no debating left anymore. When you don't pay somebody on time, automatically it's over. When you don't allow people to go on holidays and take breaks from work, automatically it's over. When you require people to work uh, two hours a day extra all the time because you want to give them the false hope that if they do that, they're going to get uh, a big opportunity in the end, over. That's not how it should be. There's eight hours in a day. There is enough time for you to get your work done, impress who you need to impress, collaborate with who you need to collaborate with, um, be creative. You can do all that in eight hours. You don't need an extra two hours. You don't need an extra three hours. Unless you want to do it yourself, that's all well and good. More power to you. But when a company is enforcing this kind of culture that that kind of makes you, that thinks that they're rewarding people who stay longer, who lick more hours, who are always at the meeting, who are taking notes, all that sort of stuff. That's when suddenly it starts to venture into this other land, startup land, where, you know, employees are not necessarily employees. They, I don't know, they're kind of like living help, which I've never been a fan of in general. Um, so anyway, with that being said, that kind of stuff is over on my part. I won't say anything more regarding that situation unless they step out of line and do some other bullshit. So, um, again, just a warning to everybody else, um, most companies, most startups, um, I'm a decent dude, man. Like I want to do good work. I, I think I can add a lot to most companies as I've done. So in the most part of my career, but I also think, you know, I, I like everyone else deserves respect, right? You deserve respect. And there are many, there are kind of like some basic general uh, benchmarks or obligations or things that companies should do for you without me having to make a video and go all crazy um, that should be met, you know, providing a safe area to work. Uh, knowing where you know your responsibilities lie and what your role is and paying the person on time that's all we want anything else on top of that massages snooker tables foosball company outings that's all auxiliary that's all extra that's all bonuses on top that's a cherry on top of the cake the basics of those jobs those free fundamentals are what we want safe place to work uh, a role that is fulfilling in some respects so you know you feel like you can do great work at that place you know responsibilities are and your boundaries are and get paid on time that's all we want. Anything else on top of that is surface level things to just, I mean, there's extra layers on the cake that's just to hide the, the shittiness of it. It's the only, you know those cakes, right? Those horrible um, sponge cakes that aren't really tasty, but then they cover with the fucking icing and they don't taste of anything. We don't want that. Give us a nice cake. I don't know who makes good cakes. <laughs>